Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the show here. So I am Sheena Kantar, and I have with me my esteemed colleague and friend. Zeyeb Kandi. <laughs> so Zareb is all the way from Paris, and I'm in Cheshire in the UK. So um, Zareb, do you want to tell people what it is that you do before we get started? Because this is our first one. And so I'm truly excited for this journey. Thank you, Sheena. I'm very happy and grateful to be with you. Um, I am a coach and I, I help people to be in alignment with their desires. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> and I love the saying, just listen, guys, tell me what you want and I'll show you how to get it. Now, I think that's a bit of a, when I first heard Bob Proctor say that, I thought that was a tall order. But my goodness, by the time you've been through the Bob Proctor material and thinking into results, my goodness, you you, you absolutely know how, how to get what you want. Now, whether you get it or not is another matter because it's about practice, 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 isn't it, Zareb? Absolutely. And consistency. Yes. Persistency and cons consistency. Some of the lessons that are in the Thinking Into Results program as well. But we're not just here to talk about that. What Zareb and I have in common is the study of um, study of scripture whether that comes from um, the Quran or the Bible, or has anybody else got something else they can throw into the mix, we can have a look at that. But what I started to notice was, is there were the correlations between the thought matrix that we have in thinking into results and really looking at that in the scripture. So we know from science, everything is proven, but what is it the scripture is saying to actually prove that as well? So I don't know if you've got anything to add, Zara, before, before we go. Yes, absolutely. And the idea is there is only one. Um, so we want to find one in everything we see. That's so beautiful. that's the idea also about the study scriptures, because it's everything, every scripture, every word points to one thing. And we want to be in alignment with the one thing. So that's why it's interesting for us to study it and to get knowledge about it and to practice it, of course. So I would be talking, you know, um, to people with, and I would be like, you know, quoting science and and quoting scripture. But then, you know, Zareb started um to send me information about the Quran, and I was just like, oh wow, look, it, it's all saying the same thing. I mean, Bob actually used to say that. He used to say that, um, you know, it's like the center of time. Everything is pointing to the same thing. You know, we don't need to you just keep on the same path, and you will all get there eventually. But what path are you on? So you sent me some things, um. I don't know if you want to read them. Do you want to read the first one? So it was um, number it was 57. Do you want to read that? Have you got that in front of you? Yes, 57. Um, o men, a call for good has been made to you by your Lord. It is a remedy again. It is a remedy against bad suggestions. It's also a guide and a blessing for, for believers. So you said to me that you thought this was all around lesson one and lesson eight. I don't know if you want to explain what, what your thoughts were behind this, why you said that. Yeah, so the idea behind that for me, it is there's only good with God and the good that we are seeking is to be alignment about what we want. Uh, because what we want, it is like a press upon us. So that's why for me, it's about lesson one, because um, the, the goal in this, uh, in this world, in this physical world, is to, um, to be in alignment about the goal. And that's for me why it's lesson one. And lesson two, uh, it is a lesson eight, because for me also, it's important to, um, that our action match our beliefs so and so that's idea about lesson eight and also for me it's also about lesson two because uh, the bad suggestions and to um, to be aware of them and to not choose them uh, we find it in the lesson two i don't know what you think about that uh, shina no well um Excuse me if I seemed a little bit distracted there, but something just happened and I was just making sure that something something was was perfect in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I did get a little bit distracted and my heart just went there. So I'm just going to um, apologize for looking down there, Zara. No, yes. Um, I mean, lesson one, just what you said there, you know, like 
I remember saying to you that the goal is God. And I heard that said, and I was like, I wanted to understand what that was. And that may be, you know, for some people just going, well, I thought we're supposed to get, you know, this is all about the law of attraction and getting. And what I very, very quickly realized it wasn't about getting is that we already had everything. And there's a certain consciousness that we have, but we have grown up with a lack consciousness instead of an abundant consciousness. And so whenever we say the goal is God, it's about, you know, God is everything and God is everywhere and God is one. And so when we come from that consciousness, then that's that's like the escalator going up with you. Whereas the other way that everybody's working is the escalator is going down and you're running up and doing all the work. And I never believed that that was what was supposed to happen. I remember whenever I got married for the first time and um, my dad said at the wedding, you know, our Sheena, delusions of grandeur and I thought what does he mean by that like you know delusions you know so I didn't really understand that but you know I was always like you know basically that and you could have anything I really felt that on the inside that nothing was a problem and so in lesson one and thinking results what we talk about is the I am statements I am yeah so claim that which you already are so whenever we in lesson one it's all about you know well what do you want well then i claim it don't work towards it act as if you already have it and so i am a millionaire i mean you may not believe it and if you told anybody else they'd laugh at you but that's the idea is just like you know claim that which you are that the good is there and it is a remedy against bad suggestions because if somebody wants to say well you're not you can just go well i am I am that I am like with your little hands on your on your hips, you know, like be like little children. You, know, I am. But I would suggest that you probably don't tell a lot of people. You can tell Zareb and you can tell Sheena. But, um, you know, maybe you don't want to be telling too many people about that. But you also said um, about lesson eight, which is praxis. So. Praxis for people. I don't know, Zara, do you want to explain what you what you thought was there with praxis? Praxis is to be um, is that your action are in alignment with your belief. So about lesson one, when we claim what we already are and what we already want, but it's not just to claim it, it's also to to match our action with that belief. So that's the idea behind it. And that's why for me. You, you just have to claim and to to practice it and to be in alignment with it that's awesome and so the bad it's a remedy against bad suggestions you know most of the time it's like the bad suggestions come from ourselves don't they yeah i'm not this that's not what i'm not worthy of that where does it say that in the quran or where does it say that in the bible that you are not worthy it is saying here you know a call for good has been made to you by your Lord. Like it's been made to you. It's been given to you. The images that you see have been given to you. You just have to accept them. You're not making them up. You're not asking for anything. They've been given to you. It's like so clear there. Let me get off my little, my little soapbox there. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not a question of being worthy. In fact, it's downright selfish to say no to a good idea, isn't it? Absolutely. If only we'd known this. Why can't we teach this to children, Zyreb, from the right from day one? If they knew this, instead of saying, whenever they say, I want a Ferrari, and their parents say, no, you can't. Well, why yeah. not? Get them a little toy Ferrari. Then they can look at it. You know, I did that kind of... Um, Sarah, with a, with a horse, you know, all I wanted was a horse. My parents wanted golf clubs. So yeah. I got golf clubs. But as soon as I could afford my own horse, I bought my own horse. And, you know, I was married to somebody at the time who said I couldn't have a horse. And I was just like, why would you ever stop somebody from having their passion? Why would, why would you say no to somebody for having something that they wanted? So I completely ignored him. And clearly then that marriage is not... <laughs> It's either horses or man, so the horse one. A bad suggestion, yeah. So the next one you said, um, so this is lesson uh, lesson 59, um, not lesson 50. Oh, no, hang on. It was lesson one. So um, 
Well, if you can read, I don't know, read 58 and 59 and we'll do them both together, maybe. Because lesson Perfect. 58 is just like a, something else from lesson one as well. So 58, say the grace and the blessing of God were to be the, the, the grace, sorry, uh, the grace and the blessing of God were to be for them goods, more precious than all the riches they can amass. 59, say of the goods that God lavish, lavishes on you, you declare some illicit and others lawful. Say, did God authorize you to make this, this distinction or are you attributing attributing to him attribute attributing it to him falsely okay see i imagine whenever people read this they you know they don't know how to live it and that's really what we're doing here zarab isn't it it's just you know giving people a thought matrix in which to put in these these like these things the, these words because how do you live what is in here and so when we have like 12 12 things that we can slot them in and we know what those 12 things are and we know how to live them. Now we put this material into those 12 things, then it seems to become obvious, doesn't it? Absolutely. And uh, yes, it's the pathway to to be to have to to be in alignment about what you claim in lesson one. Yeah. So it's very easy and you can explain it, you can share it, and you could you could share the goods that you have been given. Absolutely. The grace and the blessing of God were to be for them goods more precious than all the riches that they can amass. <clears throat> that is very much saying to me, you know, um, when I said before, I said the goal is God. So the abundant yeah. consciousness rather than the lack consciousness, the abundant consciousness, and you can have more and that we are 99.999% spiritual the well we're all spiritual but the that is what's left over is is all that we're aware of and we work so hard let's call it one percent and 99 percent. it seems a little bit easier but we work so hard in that one percent to amass all these riches that fall away yes and it just seems silly now it's, it, there's in the bible it says something about um you know about building your house on, on a rock or building your house on the sand. Well, building your house on the sand is, is the humanness of us. You know, you try to get things, you try to feel secure with money, a relationship, a new house, a new car, and it's never good enough. Yeah. Whereas you can have everything in an abundant consciousness, which is our imagination. What does that mean for you? For me, that's that's the real blessing to be um, to be to be um, a part and to be aware of to be a part of the infinite. So um, if you are aware about uh, who you are, who you really are, um, that you are the um, the receiver and the giver of everything. So for me, that's the blessing, and um, and that's why uh, we are here, and that's why we have to share it. That was beautiful. So I love what you foundation. said. Then. Sorry, Sorry the, the receiver and the giver of everything. I love that. Yes, that's um, that's what I feel, and that's like the real um, house built in something very solid and eternal hmm. and real. Because other things like bad suggestions, um, they are not aligned. They are simply not what you are. So you just have to be aware about what you are. Mm. And you are infinite. You are infinite power. And there is nothing that can... Uh, you don't have solution. Absolutely beautiful. And you know... That was just two little passages that we talked about there, but there was so much in them. And actually, I see that everything was just around lesson one and um, about, you know, being clear on your goal, but being clear who you are. But we delved, you know, we can delve deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper into that. But for now, I think that's just like we're going to leave this this 
you know, this session on this one and um, we're going to come back. So I know that you'd read the next one and um, that was, you know, to do with, you know, a couple of other lessons, lesson three and and we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that the next time. Goodness knows where this is going to take us, but uh, let us know if you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Um, I love listening to Zareb and how he, how he speaks about this. And um, it's just bringing all this material together so that you can live a life that's, um, I would say, of peace, but still have life results at the same time. You know, you don't have to have one or the other. You can have both and it doesn't have to be effort. It doesn't have to be effort. I'd like to show you a new way. Zara, have you got any final words? Yeah, thank you, Sheena. I really appreciate to, to be with you. And that's it for me. The, the end, it's like to be in balance between like uh, results and peace. And that's it. Because we are spiritual bodies living in physical worlds. So everything is in alignment about what we want. Super duper. Listen, thanks very much, Sarah, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Gina. <laughs>